Hi there and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I will show you how to create an Asset Master in the SAP S4HANA system using Fiori. Therefore, we navigate to the application called AS01. That's AS01. It's also called Create Asset. Before I click on this application, please be aware that you will only see this application if you assigned this particular role over here zap underscore br underscore aa underscore accountant to your user in the backend system. As I have done this, I can see the application called create asset. Let's click on this one and we are forwarded to the start screen. So as you can see over here, I first need to choose one of the existing asset classes. These asset classes are used to categorize our assets. Let's say we choose buildings over here. I will make a separate video about the asset classes in future as well. Then we need to provide a company code because an asset is always created within a company code. As you can see, 1710 is already provided over here. And last but not least, you can see number of similar assets. So this number here has to be one or greater than one. If we insert a number greater than one, then this would give us the opportunity to create multiple similar assets in the same step. For now, I will leave it to one. As you can see, we could also create an asset from reference, meaning that if we have an existing asset in our system, we can insert it over here and then create our new asset with reference to the existing asset so that all the values will be taken over. But for now, we will create a brand new asset from scratch. So we click on master data. You can see there are different tabs displayed over here. We will go through the most important ones before we save the asset. So let's start with the general tab. We need to provide a description. So let's say test asset like that. We can even provide more text and you can see over here account determination is grayed out because this is done in the background. The account determination here depends on the customizing. I will show this in another session, but for now, you need to know that via this account determination, the reconciliation account for this asset is determined. So as you know, when we post to an asset, this is done in the sub ledger for asset accounting. However, we need to transfer those values via the reconciliation account to the general ledger. So this is why we need the account determination over here. Then you can see some posting information. So the capitalization date. So this is the value date of the asset. When we first post values to this asset in the system, then the system will fill this date here automatically. However, if necessary, we could also insert here a manual value. You can also see the field first acquisition on. This is grayed out actually, as well as the acquisition year, because the system always fills this information automatically when we first post to the asset. There is also the activation area over here. So if the asset is fully retired, so there are no more values, it's depreciated for instance, or scrapped, then the system will enter the value date of the retirement posting over here. And once this asset is deactivated, we can no longer post to the asset. Let's go to the next section called time dependent. Over here, we can insert some time dependent data for our accounting. So in my system, you can see the cost center is mandatory at least. So let me just choose one. I could also include an internal order as well as a plant and the location and room where this asset is located. If necessary, I can select a functional area and also a profit center for the profitability analysis, as well as a segment for the IRFS accounting. And down here, I could say that I want to shut down the asset for the display period of time in this instance forever so to say. And if I set this indicator, then no depreciation will be calculated for this asset. For now, I will leave it as is. Let's go to the origin tab. Actually, in your system, this should not say origin, but assignments. This is a little buggy in my system. So here we can insert so-called evaluation groups, which are used to classify the asset even more. And we can insert an asset super number. So with that, several assets can be assigned to one asset super number. So for instance, a production line consisting of multiple assets could be summarized via this one super number. It could also be that you can see more information down here, which is grayed out in my system. For instance, if you have an integration between equipments and assets, I will make a separate video about that topic as well. Now let's go to origin. This is the real origin tab where we can include a vendor that we purchased our asset from, also the manufacturer of the asset, and some more non-mandatory information to classify the asset even more. For instance, if it's a new asset or if it was purchased used. And down here, we can also assign the asset to an investment order 
if necessary, which is used if the system should also automatically post transactions on the asset statistically to this order. And then most importantly, we have the depreciation areas where we can actually define the depreciation for this asset. So first of all, we could deactivate here a certain depreciation area if necessary. And then you can see here the area numbers that also depend on the asset class of our asset. And here it's important to notice that those areas represent the values of the asset for a particular purpose. So for instance, the book depreciation, the IFRS depreciation over here, there could also be local depreciation, tax depreciation, and so on and so forth. So we assign those depreciation keys over here that will determine how the depreciation is calculated. And then we also specify the useful life. So for instance, here the calculation in this case is done over 25 years with the depreciation key LINS. So the depreciation is done by dividing the value of the asset by 25. So 1 25th of the asset will be depreciated each and every year. Yeah, this is the most important information for creating an asset master. Then you only need to save and the number will be generated over here for the asset. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you liked the video. If so, then please subscribe to my channel and activate the bell. See you next time.